for doing the lip syncing, it's nice to actually insert the layers first so it's done. Now we can have as many facial feature layers as we want as we're doing a hat and other body parts, etc. But I'm going to just keep it simple and have a uh, head layer, an eyes layer, and a mouth layer. So as I go to paint on my head layer, I can give myself a fatter brush to work with. And that'll work for the head. You can fill it up. So, except my artwork's on the wrong layer, so that's easy enough to fix. Paste the artwork in on that layer. I can verify in the library that I'm on my head layer and that's what it artwork looks like. I go here, get rid of what was there. Doesn't have anything now for the eyes. Go back to my blue color. And I'm going to violate what I said about not wanting to use default color schemes. Later on I'll go change the colors, but it's nice to have something to start with. So now the eyes, by being on their own layer, I can move or animate them, or I could swap them out for a blink or something like that. I could just add in an extra drawing of the blink, and then I would have blinking eyes. Now really comes the meat of it, and this is where we draw out the different mouth shapes as part of it. And when we're creating these shapes, we can start with the neutral mouth, and that which will be labeled X once we have the different pieces of artwork made. Or we could start with the different mouth shapes, the one for the M's and the other consonants, and E, A, O, U, and then our F, mouths. Uh, you can make an L mouth if you know you're going to need a shape for L. Uh, Animate Pro doesn't by default lip sync in the L mouth where the tongue is on the top of the mouth when you're trying to do that. So you have to manually add that drawing in or keyframe that in as you're using it. I mean it, and it's no big deal to swap out because it gets about 90-95% correct when it auto lip syncs and then you have to go tweak a few of them just to create the final mix of what you need. So I like to just start out, oh I guess you need, kind of could use the nose too. I feel like you need something so we'll, oh wrong tool there. Go back to my brush. I kind of feel like you know we need some sort of nose as part of it because otherwise it's pretty big expanse. Now going back to the mouth layer, going to Decide that he has kind of a frowny face to begin with. That's going to be his neutral or closed mouth shape. Now if I go to my next frame and want to draw my next mouth, keeping it track of where it's going to be, one of the key things to remember is as we draw a mouth, if we start drawing teeth as the mouth opens up, the teeth, the upper teeth are connected to your skull. So you have to be really careful when you're animating that, that you don't make the upper teeth start moving up and down. Otherwise, during the lip sync process, you're going to end up with a really odd looking character. Unless you move the head, the upper teeth shouldn't move. The lower teeth, because as you talk, your mouth opens, your jaw comes down. Lower teeth can move up and down as part of the talking process, but the upper teeth really should not. So I can see there's my closed mouth shape. Now my next one is going to be where the character is making a closed mouth kind of for that MB sound, so now it usually pulls the mouth tighter. And as you're doing this, you think about what the sounds are. You can even say the sounds or make the sounds. So you go, mm, and pay attention to what shape your mouth makes. So doing lip sync or character shapes and mouths often requires a mirror, a camera, and a lot of acting it out. 
Uh, if you're uncomfortable doing it in front of other people, then you need to animate in a secluded spot or at home. So that now gives me my next drawing. Now I can move on to my next one is where the mouth is going to open. And as the mouth opens, it's for the kind of open, but we see only teeth as part of this. So it will be an open mouth kind of shape. So it's stretching it. It's doing it for the consonants where you're not opening to pronounce it, but the C. So your lips part, but your teeth remain together during this type of sound. So I could decide that my character is going to have some teeth and I could even draw or indicate those as part of it. Now moving on to the next shape is going to be the E shape. And this is where I can recycle the same teeth, but now the mouth is going to open up. So I can now start to show some of that mouth shape opening. And during this, if you start filling things in and you're doing your artwork with the paintbrush, then the onion skinning doesn't work really well because you can't see the lines through it. If you use the pencil tool, then that works okay with onion skinning. But when you're using the paintbrush, if I start filling in, it will just show up a solid color from frame to frame. And then that doesn't really help me as I'm trying to line up or draw my mouths. So now the next mouth I want to make is for the A sound. So now the mouth is going to open quite a bit more as part of it. Teeth should remain in about the same position. And then we may see some of the tongue as it's A before we move into our O mouth. The O and the U mouth are where I think it starts to get kind of fun as part of it. So we now start to take on a different so if you have O, the U where it gets tighter and skinnier. and the F or V sound where the teeth are going to be pressing down on the lower lip. So the lower lip is underneath the teeth. So we end up with that kind of shape. And then the, oh, and I started with the neutral. So we have the we turn it off, turn off onion skinning, the closed mouth, the MV, then we have for our consonant sounds, our E sound, A, O, U, and then F. And then if you need an L sound where the tongue is hitting the top of the mouth, then you could add in that additional mouth shape as well. Once the mouth shapes are drawn, the next step is to start coloring these different shapes as we go through our frames. And now I find it's easiest to just choose one of my fill colors, then go through each of my frames, fill everything. and then choose the next color and do my fill operation all over. Is it keep changing colors as you're working can be, you know, it, it's not a very efficient way of working with it. All right. So after the different mouth shapes are created, then 
we can scrub through it and start to get a sense. Does it feel like our character, does it feel like the lips are moving and the mouth is moving? Or if your mouths feel like they're jumping all over on the screen when you just kind of scrub back and forth here, if you feel the a sense that they're bouncing around, then you need to work on aligning things a little bit better because the lip syncing won't be very convincing. But when you scrub it, if it looks like it almost is like someone changing their mouth shape where you feel the lips are moving, then you know you've done probably a good job with it. After the different mouth shapes are made, what we need to do is we need to change the name of the drawing. If I look in my library, I'll see that each one of these drawings, as I'm looking at it, has a, oh, it looks like we, we have an extra one. Oh, from when I drew in the wrong layer and deleted. Uh, but each one of these has a number as its name. Now, one thing that a lot of people think that they could do is you're like, okay, well, if I'm here and need to name it, I can just highlight and type in the name that I want. But if I do that, it doesn't actually change its name. Instead, what it does is it creates an additional drawing, a brand new, as if I added one more frame of my, to my drawing, and then that wrecks everything, and that's just not good. So my recommended course of action when going through it is to, in your timeline down here, I click on the drawing I want to rename. So I'm on the mouth layer, I click on that drawing, and then if we right click right there, you will see under drawings, we have an option to rename. Now we're going to memorize this keyboard shortcut of command D for drawing because it, it's faster than right clicking there. And the neutral mouth shape is going to be named with a capital letter X. So this is my not talking mouth shape. Now you don't have to have a frowny face, yours can be a happy, the mouth could even be open, it could be crooked, sideways, wiggly doesn't matter. But this is now the when there's no sound, this is the mouth shape it's going to use. I move to the next drawing. I click on that. And this is an occasion where I can't use the keys on the keyboard to move. I have to actually click on the drawing. And then Command D. And now this drawing for my MBP sound is going to be labeled capital letter A. Move to the next drawing, Command D. That is going to be a capital letter B. Next drawing, Command D, capital letter C. Next drawing, capital letter D. Capital letter E. All right, so now I will be on drawing F. So Command D, this will be drawing F. Final one, G. Now, if I go back into my library and look through the drawings, we'll see we have A, B, C. Okay, we don't need this one anymore. Can I? drawings that I'm just going to get rid of the empty ones because they're in the way. Delete, select a drawing. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and X. So now I have my different mouth shapes as I need them. So once the drawings are named, and again if you end up with extra ones here, it's not a big deal. You can just right click and delete things. But now I have my different mouth shapes. I have X, or it could be an A, or it could be a B, it could be a C, it could be a D, E, F, G. I like that one. That one's fun. And then X. Okay, so now I've proven that I have my different mouth shapes to work with here. Once the drawings are renamed, the next step is to bring in your sound, and then we will map the lip sync to the sound. So the final few steps go pretty quick. We just need to import into, oh, get into the right program, import sound. So I choose import sound, going to go find my file, lip sync, 
there's some sound, I hit open, now it adds it in. I know that this particular sound is approximately 680 frames long from previous experience, so I'm going to do that. Okay, so now what I do with the sound layer is not in the naming section over here, but on the waveform itself, somewhere out here, we right click and choose lip sync, auto lip sync detection. It's important you do it out here. If you do it over here, you'll see that you don't have any lip sync options. So you have to do it on the sound itself. The next step is choose map lip sync. And it shows me, okay, what layer? My voice layer. What's my destination? What do I want to map? Well, the only artwork that actually has frames to map would be my mouth layer. So I choose mouth. We can see how our names correspond. If I did not name my layers, I would have to then type in what the correct name is for each or my drawings. I would have to type that in here. It's much easier to just rename your drawings and be done with it. Now if I hit OK, you'll see my timeline will explode with frames. So I didn't do anything to set that up. It automatically took care of that for me, which is pretty sweet. So it's and then I just need to extend my other layers out. Okay, so apparently it's only 400 frames long that I need, not that many. So we'll just shorten the scene to 400. All right. And if I want to verify it's working, I can set up and turn on uh, scrub or play sound. I really do have no idea what I'm going to say. So we can see that it's working, but to prevent weird feedback, I'm not going to continue recording on that part.